uh, Joseph called me, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so, and said, hey, I've got like great news. We're all really excited about your work and the show. We just, we moved you to this way bigger room. <laughs> and um, I like kind of just like mentally dragged and dropped the stuff that I was going to build in here. And I was like, this is just, this room is way too big. I can't entertain a hundred people uh, the way I was planning. So I super saw, you know, I started thinking, how can I scale this thing up in a way that would be exciting? Uh, that would challenge me and progress my practice and, and uh, get me to build things that were like somewhat outside of my comfort zone, stuff that I'm always building. Um, so the, the speakers use a combination of drivers that are legendary but um, relatively new to me because they were impossible to get for a decade or two. Uh, made in Japan by a very special division of Pioneer called TAD and they made these two drivers specifically the 1601 Wolfer and the 4001 compression driver that are uh, in some of the greatest uh, like Farfield studio monitors ever made. Um, this sort of virtual coax configuration is a very uh, famous this is based inspired heavily by a very famous speaker designed by a guy named Kinoshita the Kinoshita monitors were this virtual coax with a different horn, and this horn is something that we make uh, that that we make um, not in my studio, but we uh, make out of my studio, I guess you could say. Um, and the making this kind of baffle mountable version that I could put in between two drivers was a huge challenge that we went through a long process of developing. Um, but the general philosophy is like big, very efficient speaker that doesn't need a lot of power. So you can build a very kind of purist signal chain that uh, really just relies on component quality, not um, like patches to fix problems in a, in a, in a signal. So uh, you know, generally speaking, with these types of amplifiers and this types of electronics, like if something doesn't sound right, we have to just find the kind of culprit component and make that better or we replace that with a better component as opposed to most kind of modern design electronics which have many many thousands of components and correction circuits in them uh, a lot of these devices will have only a handful of components in them so it's all about sort of just like a little bit more like a chef cooking than an engineer engineering uh, like the in quality of the, the the dish might only have four or five ingredients but the quality of the ingredients is what's important not the complexity of the of the recipe. That's kind of the philosophy in a nutshell. Um, this is the first time in one of these listening type systems that I've had two turntables, but I don't have a mixer. There's no way to blend the signals. It's just the ability to load just less downtime. So I can put a, a record on, have it playing, and kind of get another record sort of queued up. And then I just have a switch that I can switch to the different, um, different tracks or you know different arms, there are four different arms of the two turntables. So like, I'm not going to be the only one playing music here over the summer, I'm going to be in and out. But I think the, the main thing is like, don't expect something like a DJ performance here ever, it's just about listening to music. And a lot of times, listening to whole albums like we just did, like first track to last track, um, you know, in the daytime, it's, you know, obviously right now we're kind of having a peak moment of sorts. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you enjoy this experience, I play a lot quieter during the day. That was that was pretty maximum right there. But um, a lot of the times when we're listening at like very comfortable kind of whisper levels, it's just about having a nice, pleasant, like most of the time relaxing sort of experience. And um, yeah, this is day one of three and a half months. So hopefully we'll form <laughs> new communities and you know make new friends. And I got some of my favorite artists will hopefully be coming through and bringing, whether it's uh, you know original master tapes or uh, test pressings of unreleased records, or just some old music of theirs that they want to share, or uh, in some cases, music they have nothing to do with except for that it's in their collection and they like it. Um, who? Who? Well, do you, do you have a schedule we could follow? Yeah, there's a schedule on the on the SF Momo website. There's a lot of these like um, you know special guest or, or some some such thing. The the bigger names that I'm trying to lock down are like harder to wrangle. 
Like they're kind of like, when are you going to be here? Cool, like spend a day here, but then their schedule changes. So we don't want to like announce things too early. Um, but a lot of local record collectors and music personalities and yeah, lots of fun stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Start to tone it down. <laughs> <laughs>